हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम स्मृति लेक्चरर बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंड माइक्रोबायोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट सो द टॉपिक विच विल बी कवरिंग टुडे इज न्यूक्लियोजोम द पैकेजिंग ऑफ डी एन एन क्रोमोजोम द यू कैरोटिक क्रोमोजोम इट इज अ लीनियर डी एन ए मॉलिक्यूल दिस डी एन ए इज कंडेंस्ड इन टू कॉम्प्लेक्स स्ट्रक्चर्स विथ हिस्टोन एंड नॉन हिस्टोन प्रोटीन सो अ लीनियर डी एन ए इज कॉम्प्लेक्सड with the proteins which are histones and non histone proteins so that they are being packed into complex compact structures which are the chromosomes now why packing is required because the dna is about 3 meter long and it has to be packed into the nucleus which is few micrometers in diameter hence a highly coiled structure is required so that it is packed inside very small size nucleus there are various orders of packing the first order of packing the second order of packing the scaffold loop the chromatid and the chromosome now in this structure uh, in this figure we can see that the first uh, figure uh, the first diagram is showing that it's a dna double helix that is of 20 angstrom in the first order of the main focus of today's lecture is the first order of packing and the second order of packing Uh, at the dna double helix that folds in the first order of packing to form nucleosome this nucleosome consists of a dna that is wound around the histone octomers the second order of packing is forms the solenoid fiber that is 300 angstrom that's 30 nanometer the next folding will form the scaffold loop the further folding will form chromatin and finally the chromosome which consists of the chromatids that are joint at the centromere so this is the entire metaphase chromosome now looking at the picture here the nucleosomes it it is composed of histones and the core dna so the dna is of two type one is the core dna and another is a linker dna so the core dna is 146 base pair in length so this nucleosome consists of histones and non histone proteins as we can see in the picture here that the blue cylinders here represent a nucleosome and this nucleosome has wound by a core dna so a core dna size is 146 nucleotide pair the formation of nucleosome the core particle then it forms the chromatosome then it forms the nucleosome so starting with the core particle core particle is a 146 base pair of dna that is wrapped around 1.8 times in a left handed helix around the outside of the octomer of histone that's the core particle then is the chromatosome the chromatosome is where the core particle it interacts with one molecule of histone that is the h1 to form 166 base pair of dna that is called the chromatosome then the chromatosome further forms nucleosome in which the chromatosome links with the linker dna forming a nucleosome containing 200 base pair of dna now talking about the chromosomal proteins there are two major type of proteins that are associated with the dna one is the histone and the another is the non histone proteins so we can look in the picture here that there are two nucleosomes and here uh, each uh, nucleosome and this nucleosome is a histone octomer that is rounded by a dna that is a core dna that is 146 base pair and this histone octomer is made up of two sets of histone proteins in this what are histones so histones are abundant proteins that are associated with the chromosome they are rich in basic proteins so what are basic proteins basic proteins that are containing basic amino acids in them majorly lysine and histidine and arginine so at normal ph these histones have a net positive charge as they are basic amino acids 
and this because of this positive charge they will bind on to the negatively charged dna and the dna has a negative charge because of the presence of the phosphate group in the sugar phosphate bond now the histones these are highly modified proteins now depending on the type of modification that these histones will have they that will tell that if a particular dna is activated or if it's inactivated for example if there is an acetylation of the histone at the end terminal of lysine then it said it can be said that the dna is activated but if there is a methylation here methylation occurs at the lysine residue and depending on the position of the lysine in the histone it can be it can be activated or inactivated for example if the active, if it if the methylation is at the four fourth position and at the 36th position so that is called as an activation and if there is a methylation at the 9 and the 27 position that is called as inactivation now the five major type of histones that are associated with eukaryotic dna are h1 h2a h2b h3 and h4 each of this histone they have an n terminal that is hydrophobic they have a c terminal that is hydrophilic and there is a central globular structure which forms a central molecule so this h2a h2b h3 and h4 they together form the octamer around which only the 146 base pair core dna is wound and h1 is the one that links to the linker dna outside the octamer so the linker dna is the one that connects one nucleosome with another nucleosome now this is the histone types and its common basic residues that are present so h1 is rich in lysine h2a is rich more in lysine less in serine h2b is slightly in serine more in lysine and h3 and h4 are arginine rich so from this chart we can see that the h1 has a greater molecular weight that is 23 kilo dalton protein and histone h1 is also called as an linker histone because it binds to the linker dna now the non histone proteins these non histone <laughs> proteins are negatively charged that is these are acidic proteins these negatively charged proteins they will bind to the positively charged histone they are not associated with the phosphates but they are since we know that the histones are positively charged these non histones they are acidic and they are negatively charged so so they get attached on to the positively charged histones now the interaction between the dna and the histones the major interaction that takes place between the dna and the histones takes place between the negatively charged phosphate of dna and the positively charged groups of histone the major electrostatic interaction of the dna phosphates are with the globular part of the core and the other interactions include the hydrogen bonding between the oxygen of phosphates of dna and histones now the last is the most accepted model of nucleosome that is called as a solenoid model of nucleosome according to this model the 10 nanometer fiber of nucleosome gets coiled upon itself to form a 30 nanometer wide helix and this 30 nanometer structure is called solenoid it has around 5 to 6 nucleosome per helix and the histone n terminal tail direct the dna to wrap around the histone octomer disk so thank you i hope you like the video